Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm going to work on a Jig Master again. I've done several of these. This one's an un a little bit of an unusual one in that it's uh, one of the ones that they put out that there's a variation on the Jig Master. This is the Jig Master 500S. The difference is, is that the spool is removed from the non-gear side. So uh, that's uh, a, an unusual design to it. And a couple of other things as a result of that uh, that makes this interesting is that the reel is, um, uh, I, I think it's less stable. And the reason I say it's less stable is that the uh, you're missing the two screws below on the one side. This one also, I, I'm not sure who did what to whom, but the reel <laughs> has a side plate on it that's mounted upside down. So this is <laughs> this is the crank side, but they've got the the piece all the way below here. Well, Jerry mentioned that he had purchased this at a, a flea market, I believe. Uh, almost has some buyer's regret about it, but it does have a nice uh, aftermarket Gamexis power handle. He did send me drag washers to be installed, and uh, he's ready to, to make this one work. The other thing he noted was there's a lot of slop in the gear itself. If you pull in and out, you hear that banging. Well, we'll, we'll explain in a moment what that cause is, uh, but we also uh, will explain why we have to get a new replacement part for that. Well, we're going to tune this one up. We're going to make sure that he uh, uh, enjoys this reel for a long time to come and that he uh, is able to take it fishing and give this reel a second chance. Um, and while I'm going to re remove the exterior parts, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of fishing reel repair, if you like to see how reels are made and designed, if you like to understand a little bit about their uses. I cover all those uh, items in my channel. I post on a regular basis, so if you use the notification button, that will uh, help you to see what I'm posting, when I'm posting it, and, uh, well, you may learn something, and maybe you'll even be able to give some reels a second chance. The whole idea behind the channel is to teach you how to do it yourself. All right, well, this is how you remove the spool. The, these three screws do not need to be removed. They're just holding on an inner plate, but this one is the single screw take-apart system for the reel, so you unscrew that, and it should pop out with a spring and then a short turn and the reel is off. So that will remove the side plate. It will give you easy access to cleaning it up. Use a paper towel for that. And you can remove your spool through that opening. Now, if something was more significant with the reel, like this is, you're going to want to remove the non, uh, the gear side plate or the non single screw take apart side plate. To do that on this reel, there's only four screws. If you look at the traditional jig master on the non gear side where the, the screws go into the housing, there's six screws. There's two more screws that hold the reel seat in. In this case, those reel, screw, uh, reel seat screws are part of the frame, much like an inner ring of a, uh, well, the, of a jig master. But uh, in this case, you only have the four. I'm going to take that off. And I'm not sure how, why, or if it was even possible to do it. But as I mentioned, this was mounted upside down. This one needs to be where your free spool lever is on top and your, uh, uh, your bridge or your, your crank side below. Well, you can still see that there's a lot of movement knocking going on there. So we're going to replace the bridge on this. We'll show you in a basic sense how to service the entire jig master with the intention that the, jig, that the bridge is the culprit here. So when you have a knocking going inside and out, you're going to find that there is three components on this bridge that matter. Let's see if we can't get this open. That's protected well, that's for sure. Wow, that was interesting. So the bridge comes pre-lubed. In this case, that lube looks like it's a little old. We're going to take that off because I want to show you the other, the other component as well. There is a gear sleeve, a pin, and the bridge itself. So 
So we want to poke the pin out of the gear sleeve to show you what's going on with the other reel. This this one's been sitting on the shelf for a while. I think the grease shouldn't be that tight. Okay, with the gear sleeve removed, we want to clean that up a little bit. There's just a little bit of dry grease on there. For a new part, that's kind of interesting. But I guess it's been sitting on the shelf a while. It's been quite some time since this reel was manufactured, so it's easily understood that sitting in a hot warehouse, that could happen. Well, if it does happen to you, you want to do exactly what we're doing here. Just want to take a moment, clean up the old grease, and, and put fresh grease on there. Okay, what's happening with this reel is that you have that pin, and you have the slot in the bridge. Now, on a new situation, you can see that pin just rides very tight in there. Over time, the pin wears, and the groove that it rides in wears. It becomes elongated, and that's when you get the gear sleeve moving in and out and doing that knocking kind of a thing. Well, we've got this one uh, new again now, so you shouldn't have that, that knock at all when we go to reinstall. All right, so we've cleaned up the uh, the new old grease in there, or the old new grease. I'm not quite sure which way we want to call that. Now we'll go get a, a grease brush, put some fresh grease on there, reinstall the gear sleeve, and push the pin back in. It's that simple. And now we got a nice free and easy turn bridge. Well, we got to get the other one out now to replace, so let's show you how we do that. We're going to remove the what would have been the handle screw, and we'll put a new handle in there when we get done. This one has a, uh, a raised inner part of the star adjuster, and that's because the, the gear um, ferrule spacer gets inset, and it helps keep water out of there. Now, on the gear sleeve here, as part of normal maintenance, if you were just trying to keep this fresh and greased, you would remove the side plate, kind of grease the sections that have been greased here, and what you would do is you would put oil in that little cavity there rather than the grease. But as you saw, as a new part, it comes with the grease, and if you're doing the full service on the reel, then you want to take that sleeve off and grease. All right, we're just going to take the two. Then we're going to take the bridge screws out of the top and bottom to release the old bridge. When I do that, I want to make sure that my uh, jack and yoke and pinion gear are in the up position. That means that the free spool is off. And we can let the last one, you'll know it falls through. On this one, you don't have to worry about the spring shooting because the spring is attached to the bridge here. So there's a little piece of that paper towel I was cleaning up. Let's get that out of there. All right. Okay, and now with the pieces out, we'll transfer to the new piece. Notice on the screws that there are two different types of screws. There's a screw that has a partial thread and a screw that has a full thread. The screws with the full threads go below the reel. Well, it looks like somebody was servicing this reel, did a nice job until we got to that last part there. But we'll take it off. There's some old greases in here, so we'll, we'll clean that up as well. I'm going to use a cotton swab to get rid of that. And I don't know uh, when the service was. There is some dirty grease in there. But it was serviced. That's always a good thing. All right, we're going to take the main gear and stack off. And we're going to remove the dog as well. Now, this the one on this system comes with a little E clip. The one on the replacement bridge does not. That's okay. Most of the, the um, Jigmaster washers do not. And you can just test there and you can see that we've got a, uh, a defective knocking going on there. A new one, no knock at all. All right, let's go ahead and uh, put some of this stuff back on. We've got the 
bottom washer. The spring that's on the post loads against this back piece here. I always find it easiest to kind of walk it in over the top and let it set behind that washer like that. That's how the spring will set on the dog. That'll keep the dog functioning. You do not need to put that little e-clip on there. There's no way on the replacement bridge to put that e-clip on there. So don't uh, don't try. If you do happen to have one that, that came with that e-clip, then by all means put that e-clip back on. All right, we've got the main gear and they've asked me to replace the, the drag washer set. That, that's good. This has the old hard give it a little e clip the old hard washers so they probably weren't stopping very well but that's okay all right where's the new set so Jerry ordered a new set of washers so we might as well do the whole thing at the same time these are the new HT 100 washers he's got a five stack here that's not uh, or a four stack there's only three in the set so I'm not sure why the extra one, but better more than less. Before I get too far down the line, I want to take the parts that I've taken off the reel that I'm not working on at the moment and put those parts into a parts tray, which is where all my pieces and parts have been going, so that I can keep track of them as I go to reinstall. Keeping track of things, uh, well, leads to less headaches later. Okay, this is the drag stock that you should have for the reel. You should have three of the modern HT100 washers. You should have two keyed washers, which are the ones with the rectangles in the center, and you should have one eared washer, which uh, holds the main gear in those slots into the drags. I'm going to use Cal's Universal Grease for this. You do not necessarily need to grease these, but I find that it's helpful. And uh, what I do is I dip it into grease use my glove as a tool and then I just wipe it off any excess that's there. You should be able to see the cross hatches in your um, uh, greasing. If you don't see the cross hatches you've got too much grease on there and you should remove some or wipe it off. I'm going to take a hard bristle brush and clean out the channels of the main gear next. I wipe that onto a paper towel underneath so that I don't transfer it when I go back in to get the next series of, of teeth cleaned out. Once they're clean and inspected, you want to make sure that there are no chips or cracks or, or bends or things going on with the gear. If it is, it'll be very noisy. I just got uh, five Penn Senator 4 O's in from a charter boat, and every one of them had worn gears. Well, cleaning them up and uh, re them isn't going to fix the problem. You need to replace those. All right, the main gear goes on top of that first backer washer. Now we got three HT100s that we're going to replace. And he gave me a set that's not Jigmaster set. Well, that's interesting. Okay, we're going to have to stop the video and get the Jigmaster washers. Okay, so sometimes you just wonder what's going on. You've had the uh, your side plate installed upside down. You've got the wrong drag washers. Well, we'll just swap these out and use the uh, the newer HT 100s for the Pen Jigmaster. You'll see they're smaller. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to dip the uh, piece into the uh, grease, smooth it around with our glove, and then the first of the keyed washers go in. We repeat it again. If there's excess, you want to wipe it off. Now the eared washer goes in the middle of the stack and then we go in with one more. That's the third of the washers, but uh, Jerry asked me to do the old timers trick with this one, so we're going to do that. He also sent along a Pen 60 washer and the old timers would add the 60 washer to give you another level of, uh, oh, let's see he also sent in replacement bottom shield, so we'll do that too. Probably should have checked that first. I guess I got sidetracked. All right, the stack is back in, and the old timers would take a, a washer for the Pen 60 
Long Beach and put that on top of the Jig Mac Master stack and that will increase max drag. Then you put your collar washer on top of that. So that stuff is all completed. So what we've done now is we've rebuilt the stack. We showed you a little trick there. And uh, we can go ahead and reinstall then. We've cleaned the inside of the plate. I'm going to use our grease brush to put a little bit on that backside bearing and on the eccentric. And while I'm at it, I'm going to grease the bearing on the non gear side. Also, we'll oil the click lever there. Okay, we can next approach the reassembly of the gear side. The first two pieces in are the yoke springs. Then we want the yoke, the jack, and the pinion gear. We want to clean those up next. If you can get away with cleaning them up by wiping them down with a paper towel and nothing more abrasive, then that's what you should be doing. I would only recommend that you uh, get into some of the more uh, aggressive methods, like steel wool and the like, only if needed. All right. Check the pinion gear just like we checked the, uh, the main gear after you've cleaned it. We'll go ahead and put the grease onto that. We'll load the pinion gear on. And we'll grease the teeth of the pinion gear as well. Well, if you have any questions on this wheel or any wheel, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, maybe you want to just know a little bit more about a fishing wheel, whatever. If you leave that in the comment section, I do try to answer the questions in the morning before I get into the shop. And uh, if you leave it in the comment section on this one, regardless of what the reel is, I will try to help you out if I can. All right, next up then, we're going to compress the yoke and the jack system. We're going to insert the main gear. We're going to turn this completely around now. Remember, you have a, a spring that's on the... Uh, bridge so you don't have to worry about setting the, uh, the spring in the dog that the way that you do on other pen wheels. And we're going to grab the four screws. I mentioned before there's a fully threaded screw and a partially threaded screw. The fully threaded screws go below. The screws up top are partially threaded so that those springs that we put in behind the yoke can ride easily and not get snagged on the threads of the screw. I'm going to use a pick to align that top bridge cavity. And I'm going to take a partially threaded screw and go opposite the first one that I put in. That keeps the tension on the bridge equal. It also helps square up the other holes. I'm going to grab the second one. We'll go across now. And I probably should have done the same thing. Use that pick to, to square up the holes. That yoke floats, so every now and then you'll find that it's uh, misaligned a little bit. You'll get it. There we go. Okay, so we learned a couple of things. We've learned how to, to diagnose a problem, in this case a, a worn sleeve and bridge. We know the replacement part was the easy thing to do. We've learned that somehow the reel got misassembled and I guess that's uh, operator error there. It didn't come from the plant that way but that's okay. And now we've uh, learned how to go back and notice there's absolutely no movement in and out on that bridge and that the reel turns nice and easily. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall. When I go to reinstall now, I want to pull the gear back in. It's an easier way to put this together. And notice you've got the two screws here now. So that was weird. You're putting it this way, but there's no cavities. The cavities are down here. So there, there couldn't have been a very good fit. I suspect maybe somebody kind of jammed it up. When you go to reinstall, just do that. Line up your cavities. Push the side plate in. That's going to hold it. And you can see where the inherent weakness is in this reel. You're only dependent on the frame for these two holding the side plate together. And then you've got a single screw holding the side plate on the other side. 
And uh, well, this frame, this reel has been known for frame twist. You get a large uh, fighting fish on this reel, and uh, if you're reeling side to side trying to fight the fish, there's just not a lot of support in this frame to keep it square. And that's uh, that's the downside of it. But uh, somewhere along the line, it uh, was voted on as a good design by Penn, and they put it into production. Didn't last very long. This reel, I believe, was made in the 70s. But uh, I'd have to check a little bit more there. All right, that's three of the four screws. Here's the fourth one. The reel is very clean. I think Jerry probably cleaned it up before he sent it in. Did a nice job. It's a very nice and shiny reel. And uh, he was uh, kind of lamenting that he, he's got the 500S, not the 500. I think for, we had talked a little bit, I think what, for his purposes and what he's going to do, this will be fine. I don't think he has to worry about it. And he certainly is going to have a nice refreshed reel here that should last him a long time. Grease up the splines on your spool. <coughs> insert those. Make sure that the shoulder of the um, spool is nice and tight there. Find the hole, which is the bottom hole of this crossbar. That's where your uh, alignment is going to be for the single screw take apart. Push in, turn a little bit, screw in the side plate screw, and uh, we're in pretty good shape there now. Now we should be able to spin this nice and freely and we do. There's an adjustment here. If you want to spin it more, just back off the uh, the bearing. If you want it a little bit tighter, bring it in. You should have just a, a little bit of movement on the spool. So this one needs to come in a little bit more. You don't want a gap on the sides of the spool because the line's going to get trapped in there. That's almost it. There we go. And that's your spinning Master. Let's go ahead and put that nice uh, Gamexis handle on there. So I was at a fishing show. Maybe some of you saw my sh my sh uh, short on the Saltwater Fishing Expo that was around our town. And uh, a representative from Gamexis was there. And I didn't realize Gamexis makes very big, large saltwater trolling reels. And uh, I, I was talking to the rep, asking the rep... Uh, how they've handled. He said he's had them for several years now, which kind of surprised me. And that, um, well, the uh, performance was very good. Well, I think we got the second issue here now. Oh, the bottom one works. I don't see. Oh, the top one does too. Okay. I'm going to set it to the inner one. I don't think he wants all that leverage. I was having a little issue aligning it with the gear sleeve. I'm going to start the handle screw. And then I'm going to tighten down on the drag stack. If you don't, when you go to set your, your handle screw to tighten it up, you will uh, eventually have an issue with the uh, compressing that down. Well, can't find my wrench for a moment. We'll use a, a different wrench. Tighten that up so that you can align the scallop with the hold fast for the screw. Then put the whole fast screw in to keep that uh, handle screw from turning loose. I was just about ready to give it a uh, give it a test, make sure everything is working fine. So this is uh, this is something of a hot rotting of the reel, I guess. We've we've added max drag by putting that extra washer in there. We got a nice leverage handle on here. We got it all cleaned up and ready to go. And here we go. Well, Jerry, I think you got a beautiful reel here. And uh, it's one that's going to last you a long time. Love that. Love the Gamexis handle. That'll spin forever. And uh, just as a sign of quality in that reel itself. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And again, if you uh, like these kinds of videos, please subscribe. If you want to see more, please hit the notification button. And uh, we'll do our best to uh, keep you in the know and show you how to, to service reels. And 
keep you learning about the wheels and the technologies behind them. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Truly do appreciate your efforts. And to everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.